I love writing, I love telling stories. I think you can probably tell that. I think the one, one way I know that you can become a better storyteller is to look at those stories that were told hundreds, thousands of years ago or by other authors that have lasted and lasted and lasted and become absolutely part of our whole world. So, for instance, if you, if you have a book like Pinocchio, well, maybe you, you've seen a film, but I bet you don't know who it's written by. And in the end, what happens with these stories, they become so well known, you forget the author. It's the story that counts. And Pinocchio, of course, this story about a, a puppet that's uh, made by an old couple who want a child and they make this little puppet. And this puppet becomes their son and their daughters. And then he runs off. And he does actually so much what very children do. He doesn't necessarily do what he's told. And when he makes mistakes, which he does often, he goes and makes another mistake. He doesn't seem to learn from his mistakes. He's like every child, boy or girl, that's ever been born. And that's what's wonderful about this story. It's a universal story. It's Italian. Um, and the Italians love it. It's most certainly the most popular book in Italy, but it has spread all over the world. When people think puppet, they think Pinocchio. It's just the most wonderful, wonderful tale. Problem is, I found that people weren't reading the original tale anymore. They were watching the movie. And so I thought, no, tell it, and but tell it differently. Tell it from Pinocchio's point of view. So this is Pinocchio's story of Pinocchio by Collodi, the original writer, but also by Morpurgo, also an Italian name, which is a slight coincidence. But I, I like that. I like mixing myself up with the original writer, retelling what was a brilliant story in a way which you people might really like. So this is Pinocchio by Pinocchio. It's written by a puppet, this puppet. So I hope you enjoy that one. I really love doing that.